tea up front that we can try yeah. out. So there's tea, if anybody wants tea, we've got cups, and there's two different kinds, so if anybody wants some tea, help yourself. Um, yeah, so we do have the website and a newsletter on there, so if you want to sign up to the newsletter, you can find out what's happening at the farm. Um, we're planning a couple more herb classes at the farm, a little bit more hands-on, because this one will be really basic. Um, it's hard to do a lot in an hour, and I don't know like people's skill set and what they're interested in, so it's a pretty basic class, but we'll be doing something in the garden in the summer and the spring. Um, so yeah, we'll start. We'll see if Melanie brings my <laughs> cable that I need, because um, I had a little bit of a, um, a little blurb here with pictures and stuff happening, but I wanted to just start with um, just the basics of herb growing and like the easy ways that you can start herbs in your own backyard garden. Um, the herbs that I'm discussing today, I kind of had seven that I was thinking of that are fairly simple and easy for people to start with that are mostly perennials, meaning that you can keep them for more than one year. Um, I like the perennials because you can keep them and you don't have to worry about starting new ones every spring. You can keep them going and either bring them into the house in the winter or keep them outside depending on the ones. Um, so most of the herbs I find can be staying in a permanent spot in the garden and they actually don't like too much compost or too much fertilizer so they're fairly easy to grow in a more poor soil or in a soil that is not as nutrient rich which makes it a lot easier than a lot of other vegetables and, and flower plants. Um, they like a very well draining soil so they don't want to be super wet, they prefer to dry out between waterings. Um, yeah, so finding a good well-draining spot, a spot that's mostly sunny or full sun is usually best for them. They do like a lot of sun. They like this, they like uh, a long day with sun and um, they don't want to be overwatered. They prefer to have their roots dry out between waterings. And um, yeah, six, six hours or more of sun a day is usually best for them. So if you can find spots in your garden where they do get a full sun day, that's the best for them. Um, yeah, and most of the perennials, they'll be fine in the ground for the whole winter. The only one on my list that might want to come inside is rosemary because it's a bit of a sensitive one to the cold. So that one we usually keep in pots and then bring those pots into our greenhouse in the winter. Um, we also do some into the soil itself and dig them up in the winter and then bring them back. It, like dig them out of the ground and bring them back into the greenhouse in, uh, in a tray and let them overwinter on our heat bench. Um, yeah, they, they just, they're more of a Mediterranean climate so they don't really want to have the super cold frost. But most of the other ones will do fine in the winters. So the herbs that I kind of thought about for this class were lemon balm, thyme, sage, Rosemary, mints, chamomile, and calendula. These are all pretty easy herbs to grow. They're pretty, um, they need minimal, minimal supervision. They're fairly, fairly low maintenance. Um, and I like them because they can be used for both for culinary purposes as well as for medicinal purposes, which I find nice. Cause I find that for me, like I like the fact that I can use a herb cooking with it, or I can also use it as a tea, or I can also use it as a tincture, or I can, use it in many different ways. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens here. We've got a little, <laughs> some pictures here, but not much to see from that far away. Um, yeah, so I kind of had a little blurb here about herb. Hello. Just about herb safety. All the herbs are really safe for most people to use that I've listed, but if you're growing herbs that you've not heard of or that you don't know much about, it's always good to have some reference and uh, double check with someone who knows about herbs or a grower just how safe those herbs are for all people because certain herbs can interact with medications or with um, different uh, health issues. However, all these ones are very safe. Um, and the only other thing I was going to say is one of the things that I have listed was an oxymel, which is something you can make with um, apple cider vinegar and honey but honey shouldn't be given to children under one. So that was just my little blurb there, not to give oxymels to little, little children. So, yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about lemon balm. Lemon balm, yeah, it's a member of the mint family. It's a 
very calming herb. It's uh, wonderful as a tea. I like it also as a tincture. Um, it's great for sleep, for the appetite, um, helps with easing pain and uh, discomfort from indigestion. Um, as a culinary herb, it can be used with like fruit salads, in salads, um, and also with fish. Um, lemon balm definitely likes a lot of sun. Um, it's very easy, it spreads quite easily, just like a mint family would. Um, so I find that if you do want it very contained to keep it in a pot, otherwise it does sometimes like to spread itself out a little bit. Um, but I find this is actually one of the easiest herbs to start with because it very, it's very low maintenance. It doesn't need a lot of attention. It's very yeah. easy to easy to grow out on its own. And it smells nice. And it, nice. Mm -hmm. and it actually is also great for uh, deterring mosquitoes and some other um, some other insects that you don't want in your garden. Um, yeah, the like for companion planting as well. You can plant it with uh, with herbs that are more sensitive to um, like flea beetles because it can deter those as well. So it's kind of fun. Like some of the herbs I find are really nice as companion plants because you can put them in between other stuff and they often deter bugs because the smell that we like. A lot of the bugs don't like. Yeah, another. I had a couple other notes here. Like chamomile is great with um, cabbage family plants because it deters the cabbage moths. Yeah. Uh, so going through the herbs that we had here, we have some tea with lemon balm in it actually. Um, so yeah, lemon balm is a nice easy one. I really like it, and I do like it as a companion plant as well. Um, the next one I had on the list was thyme. Um, which is an amazing herb for cooking with. It is really great in a lot of veggie dishes, meat dishes. Um, I use it in soups and stews like that. Um, but it's not only good for cooking with, it's also a super antiviral and antibacterial herb. Um, so it's a lovely herb to use and support with um, like colds and flus. Um, I often use it as a tea, so just the thyme itself maybe mixed with some mint or some chamomile that makes it a little bit more palatable tasting, but I like the taste of it, but some people might like it with some mint. Um, and I actually have a couple, well, I have an example here. This is an oxymel that I made. So this is apple cider vinegar and honey. So it's half apple cider and half honey. And then I've added rosemary, thyme, and mint in there. So that is a really great antiviral and antibacterial um, Option you could take so you could take that with some water with some tea or even by the spoonful and I do have some of that available here as well um, and that's one of the ways that I really like to use herbs actually is in an oxymel with the honey and apple cider vinegar um, the vinegar extracts more min minerals and vitamins out of the herbs than um, like an alcohol tincture would so in that way you actually get more of the, the vitamins and the nutrients out of the herbs and it tastes nice and it's, did you have a question? No, I was just saying you say you just drink it. Like yeah, so I have, I have some of it already bottled up. So I usually use it by the spoonful if you're feeling sick, just, or if you're feeling a lot of the weather, just taking a spoonful of it, but it also mixes well into teas or water or sparkling water if you yeah. wanted to do that. Um, and so yeah, it, it does take a lot of the nutrients out of the herbs, which is a great way to boost boost your general yeah. nutrients. Yeah. Do you just put the herbs in with the honey and apple cider vinegar and you can leave them in indefinitely? Yeah, so I, I put the herbs, like I put the apple cider vinegar and honey, a half and half mixture. And then I put, um, so I'll fill about a third full with fresh herbs and then fill it up with the half apple cider vinegar and half honey. I usually leave, leave it for like three to four weeks minimum. But I would say you can leave it up to two or three months like that, and I'll keep extracting out of that, and then I strain all of the herbs out of it. Strain after two months. Yeah, after two months. I would say, like, I usually don't leave them longer than that, because I think after that point, they've gotten all of the constituents out of the herbs. Um, but the, the actual, like, mixture itself, once you've strained it out, will last for six months for sure. It's actually quite, it's a long, long-lasting product. Um, yeah, another way that you could use things is also into oils. So I also do the same idea. So I put the herbs in, in about a 
third, a third of the amount with herbs and then fill the rest with oil. Um, and the oils, I kind of have a little bit of a note about that. Unfortunately, here, let's see. Yeah, the, her the, the oils I like a lot for body, like external issues. So it's great if you're having pain, mm. physical pain, rashes, dry skin. Um, I also find that it helps with um, respiratory things. If you're, if you're feeling like you have congestion in your lungs, it's nice to have an oil to rub on. Um, yeah, your next herb I had on the list was sage which is also really antibacterial and antiviral, antifungal. It's good for colds and fevers. Um, it can also be used as a gargle if you have sore throats. So the same thing, you can make a very strong tea with it and let it steep for at least an hour and then um, use it as a gargle to help with anything in your throat or also with um, mouth sores or um, the canker sores or anything like that. It'll help with that. Um, yeah, sage, again, like these are all herbs that you can use both for culinary and medicinal things, which I think, for me, I always love that. I like that you can use it for more than one thing. Um, sage, again, likes it fairly sunny, fairly dry. It doesn't want to be over water. Um, it also doesn't want to be over, like, over composted or fertilized. It wants a little bit more of a poor soil, actually. Um, and it's hardy. It'll last through most of, mostly through the winters. Um, yeah, the rosemary I have next on the list. Um, it's a little bit more of a delicate perennial, so it definitely wants to be either coming in in the winter or it needs to be really covered if it's outside because it doesn't it doesn't really handle. Yeah, it doesn't really handle much below minus five to ten depending on the wind and the <laughs> season. Um, but I like rosemary a lot. It's, um, I've got a couple things with rosemary, like the, the one oxymel here has rosemary in it. Um, I also usually do a rosemary oil. So same thing. I do rosemary and then olive oil and I let it just sit. It can sit for a month or even two months, um, in the oil. And it's really great for skin health, for scalp health. It helps with hair growth. Um, and rosemary is really known to be good for cognitive health as well. So using it as a tincture or a tea can help with um, memory, can help with uh, uh, just general cognitive health. Um, yeah, we need that one. We all need that one. Um, yeah. Just put it in a tea ball, like just. For the, for the yeah for the fresh herbs that I like or for dry, fresh or dried herbs when I make a tea I usually just put herbs into a, a mason jar like I'll just do a handful in a whatever a one liter mason jar mm -hmm. and fill it up with water and let it sit for depending on the herb but like anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour um, and then strain it out but you could totally do it in a tea ball or um, teapot with a strainer in it that would work as well um, I just so if I wanted to winter my rosemary <clears throat> outside, am I cutting it to the ground and then putting you, leaves on top, or am I putting it, it on? outside? Yeah. I wouldn't cut it down completely. Um, I would prune it a bit, like prune yeah. off what you want to use. Um, outside, we usually either put like a pot on the top, okay, yeah. maybe wrap it in burlap. Burlap and then the pot, or the pot I would the I would put the pot and then the burlap. Okay. Um, then it, it's got some space to breathe space. still. Okay. Um, We've had okay success <coughs> like that. We usually actually dig the plants up themselves yeah. and then with some soil on the roots, bring them into the greenhouse and then cover them with some remay or some cloth in the greenhouse. That way it keeps them a little bit, a little the temperature bit. up in general yeah. a little bit. Um, I've also done it with bringing pots actually into the house. Yeah, I brought them into the house that they haven't lived. No. <laughs> and I don't have a greenhouse that yeah. I'm in much colder. I have a colder temperature than you. <laughs> It's rosemary is a little bit of a yeah. it's a little bit of a tricky one. We've had always like a 50 50 yeah. percent chance. Sometimes they do, sometimes yes. they don't. Yeah, I might try those. But I would try the burlap yeah. idea. I think and the mice can't go in and have a perfect house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it warm in there. Is your greenhouse heated? No, oh. it's not heated. No, yeah. I've tried in my greenhouse. 
that. But you have a heat and that. Heat we table. do have a little heat bench. Yeah, so which we has put them on the heat bench. bench. Yeah. Oh. So it has a little heat cable in it. Oh. Yeah. So it keeps it above freezing. Oh, okay. And you can buy those heat mats downstairs. You can buy heat yeah, mats. Like you can buy just, heat mat. Yeah. And then you can temperature control. I have yeah. those for yeah. starting seats, but I, yeah. have, I might try to rosemary on that. It's it is a little bit more of a tricky one. Yeah. yeah. If you can keep it over winter, it's nice. Yeah, well, you get much, much better growth. It's too bad that it's not warmer here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. When I was in Italy, it's like they have roseberries that are like trees. Oh, yeah, like trees it's too yeah. bad. But it is a beautiful one if you, yeah, if you can over winter. Even if you can't, like you can buy rosemaries. We we always start rosemary in the spring. We have cuttings from ours. So that would be okay. Yeah. We have little ones available. Um, yeah, the next one I had on the list was mints. So all the mints are very popular for teas. They taste good and they're um, great for respiratory, for um, the nervous system, for the stomach. They can help with digestion. Um, they are a very easy one, but they will spread. They, they'll take over if you don't want them to take over. So I usually recommend putting them into pots or in containers if you don't want them to spread around. Um, again, the mints are really good as a companion plant though, or to have around your garden. Um, they attract a lot of beneficial insects actually, so they will help to bring in beneficials that'll help keep out the, the pests that you don't want. Um, they're also known to repel aph aphids and uh, mosquitoes. I mean, within, <laughs> within reason. But they can help with that. They can also help with cabbage moths, uh, flea beetles, and so they are one that you can plant with cabbages or around the area where you have cabbages or any cabbage family to help repel any insects. Um, yeah. Chamomile is another one. This one's pretty easy. Um, there's different chamomiles. So the one I'm thinking of is actually the German chamomile, which is the one I usually use. It's not a perennial, but it will reseed itself in most instances. So they do usually reseed quite well. Um, they're a mild sedative, they calm nerves, settle the stomach, um, and they're super safe herb, so they're great for children as well, and usually well tolerated by everybody. Um, yeah, the chamomile definitely likes, again, sun. Uh, they will get quite gangly, so I usually prune them back through the season, so I will harvest the flowers off of them when they first start having flowers, and then trim them a little bit, just to make them not quite so long. Um, hello. Hello. You can come in if you want. Yeah. <laughs> We're just chill. We're just chilling. <laughs> there is tea if you want some. Um, so yeah, I usually prune them back, and actually with most of the herbs, I find that they like to be pruned. They like to be picked, so as you go through the season, don't feel shy about taking bits of the herbs off, even when they're small, because it will help them bush out and help them um, actually make more flowers or make more leaves. Um, so I, that's what I usually do. Like I'm just every week taking some off of my herbs and either drying or making, making teas or tinctures with them, um, and then they'll just keep, they'll keep producing more. And the last one I had here was calendula. And calendula is great. I'm just gonna here, make sure I'm good for time. Yeah, that was good. Um, calendula is great as a um, topical herb. So it's one that you can make poultices, which you can like cook down the herb a little bit and use topically if you have burns or eczema or anything like that that needs soothing on your skin. Um, but it also works in, in teas. Um, it's great for like anti-inflammation, um, anti-inflammatory, or for uh, digestive is issues as well. And that's one as well that I would put like into oil. So the fresh, mostly fresh I prefer, but you could use dried as well into oil and use it for topically onto dry skin or anything where there's like inflammation or pain or like rash or anything on the skin. I actually had some calendula here that I harvested. I might have, I think I've had condo oil with me today. I might not have any left. But yeah, I definitely like it in, a, in an oil. And I don't know 
if anybody had any questions or any at this point? Well, the things like lemon balm and mint mm. to overwinter them, do I kind of cut them down to the ground? Um, you can, I would, I wouldn't cut them like completely down yeah, to the okay. ground, but you can definitely okay. like, I harvested my mint so yeah. it was like little sticks left. Yeah, and I have been same. Yeah, but so I just like harvested the whole thing, yeah. left a little stick at the end, yeah. and then I just dried all my mint and yeah. all my lemon balm. Um, and like for the like rosemary, thyme, and sage, you can harvest pretty pretty much the same idea, and then keep the, the dried herbs for your winter mm -hmm. cooking or whatever. Um, the chamomile, I just harvested throughout the summer, and then at the end of the season, once it's getting to be a frost, I harvest it all down and I just pull it out because okay. it does, yeah. uh, it self seeds so then it comes back and calendula, same idea kind of, like it is a perennial so I would um, cut it down okay. um, and it sometimes self seeds itself as well because that one's pretty prolific. Um, you had lots of cal mm -hmm. or calendula, didn't you? Yeah. Do you have it reseed usually? It just reseeds. Yeah. In fact, it's, it takes over. It takes over, yeah. yeah. Which is okay. No, it's fine. It's yeah. okay, yeah. No, no. And if you pinch it, <coughs> the way till you have four leaves, mm -hmm. pinch it, and cut it to the bottom, you'll get all these long. Because mm -hmm. I use mine for cut flowers. Yeah. So then you get these long stems. Yeah. But yeah, it's taken over a couple it of It does take over a little bit. We kind of planted it in with other um, vegetables, actually. Yeah. And it's great because, again, it does repel insects a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's nice for that. I find a lot of the herbs like that. I'll just I'll sort of companion plant them with stuff just That's to help it. with. Mm -hmm. Attracting uh, beneficials and pollinators and uh, repelling mosquitoes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you dry like the lemon? Like how long do you do you put it upside down? So for me, most of the herbs that I do, uh, so I'll collect them, um, and I will usually put them onto like a um, mesh. It I air dry usually, so I don't usually use a dehydrator. So I usually put them inside and air dry them. You could do this in your house. On a table or wherever, as long as there's a little bit of mesh, so there's a little bit of airflow going through it. Um, it depends a little bit on like how warm the air temperature is, but usually most of the plants will dry within like three or four days for sure. Um, I do sometimes use a dehydrator if it's like a if it's a r rainy time and it's moist out. I can use a dehydrator at the lowest temperature or with sort of more tough herbs like rosemary. Sometimes I will use a dehydrator for a little bit. Um, but mostly air dry. I mostly just use a, a mesh, like a mesh tray, or like the trays from a dehydrator and put them onto there and let them dry like that. Um, I do sometimes hang some herbs too, depending on what they are, but same idea. They just want somewhere that's dry, out of the sunlight if, if possible, because sunlight can deteriorate the, the nutrients out of it. Um, but yeah, usually it doesn't take that long or four days usually I would say for most of the herbs and so I do dry a lot of herbs and for fresh herbs like for fresh herbs I will make teas with fresh herbs as well through the through the season when I have them and I usually when I'm mixing them with apple cider vinegar and honey I use fresh herbs um, for the most part sometimes dry but usually fresh um, and for tinctures which is when you use alcohol to extract the properties out of the herbs I usually use fresh herbs as well so those ones yeah, so same idea, like I will use about a third full of herbs and then do the rest with alcohol if I'm doing a tincture. Like rubbing alcohol? Or? So I would use a, a high proof alcohol, like a vodka. I use a local oh, okay. moonshine okay. from uh, After Dark Distillery there in Sycamus. So I've been using theirs because I like to support someone local. Um, and I, you can use the tincture then straight like that as in a dropper. So I do it like that um, but you can also then mix something else into it like honey or honey and vinegar if you want to make it a little more diluted and do the same idea and use droppers so this one here was a horsetail tincture that I made last season yeah yeah, so, ask a question? yeah do you have a recommendation for a type of oil that you would use when you're soaking I use um, an organic extra virgin olive oil. I find it's the easiest one. It's the cheapest, easiest one for the skin, and it's it's got its own like antibacterial properties. Um, and I like it. I find that it just works really well on the skin. 
Uh, the other ones I would recommend, you can use like jojoba oil, but it is mu much more expensive, but it will be the most um, like preservative, so it'll last the longest. Um, some people use like uh, sesame oil, uh, but I find sesame oil has a bit of a, its own scent. Mm -hmm. So for me, I find that olive oil is a little bit more of a neutral, neutral scent. So I like that part about it. It's usually really nice. Yeah, that's the one. I, like this one here, it's got rosemary and sage and olive oil. I usually use that. Um, yeah, and the last couple of herbs I have on the list are actually um, wild plants that can be foraged and I chose them because they're fairly common and fairly well known by most people. Um, I had a little note about foraging that the number one thing is obviously safety. So make sure you know what you're foraging before you forage, be 100% sure that you are picking what you think you're picking. Um, and just to make sure that you're not taking from places where there's a, a minimal amount of plants, make sure you're just taking a small amount of what is there. Um, the herbs I have on the list were stinging nettle, which I actually have uh, stinging nettle in the nettle rose tea. Um, stinging nettle is one of the best like early spring herbs. Um, they're super, super high in iron, proteins, uh, calcium, potassium. They're a very like super nutrient rich herb. Um, they can be used almost like a spinach. So make sure you're wearing gloves if you harvest them because they will sting your hands. But once you harvest them with gloves on, you can steam them or boil them and then you either like saute them up or use them like a spinach like a boiled spinach and they're very tasty and very full of nutrients so they're one of the one of the best spring herbs for, or spring plants i guess um yeah so they're rich in iron calcium magnesium uh they're an excellent remedy for anema anemia uh, low blood pressure, general weakness, um, they're anti-inflammatory, and they're super anti-allergenic, so they're great for seasonal allergies. So it's another one I recommend. They're like, you have to be careful because they do sting you if they're raw, but one way I've um, used them is actually picking the raw nettles, mixing them with water and blending them. And once you blend them, it breaks down the cell wall and they don't sting anymore. So you can actually use them raw once you blend them. And that way it's really helpful for seasonal allergies if you do that for as soon as you can find nettles, do that until sort of allergy season and it can help reduce allergy symptoms. The other thing is you can do like a tincture. So you could do raw nettles and then alcohol and then take that tincture daily until the, the allergy season and that'll help reduce allergy symptoms. So I like, I love nettles. They're great, great for food, like great as a food and great as a medicinal herb as well. Um, the other one I had is dandelion. Most people know dandelion. <laughs> Again, make sure that you know dandelion before you're picking dandelion. But the great thing about dandelion is you can use the whole plant. So you can use the flowers, you can use the leaves, you can use the roots. Um, and they can be used again as a food plant. So the leaves can be used in salads, raw, or steamed or sauteed. Uh, the roots can also be used like a roasted root. They are a little bit bitter, but they're actually not as bitter as you think once you've roasted them. Um, they're, uh, yeah, they're really great for the digestive system, urinary system, the kidneys. Um, and yeah, the whole, the whole plant can be used and it can also, you can also dry the whole plant. So you can dry the leaves, the flowers and the roots and use that as well as a, like a kidney tonic or for the whole urinary system is really great. Um, yeah. So I have kind of a little note, yeah, so it's for using different ways to use herbs in your everyday life. Um, my kind of go-to is teas and infusions with the plants because I find it's the most enjoyable and easy way to use them. Um, so I blend my own teas. But you can certainly use single herbs as a tea as well, as well as blends. Um, for the most part, I, I say like, if you're gonna do a tea just for enjoyment, and it will still give you some benefits, I usually recommend steeping for like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, to really extract the most of the plant though, I would pour the water over and let them sit for at least an hour. Um, and then you can always reheat the, the tea itself afterwards. And tea is actually, one of the better ways to extract minerals and vitamins out of the herbs. Um, for example, like tinctures and oils, 
will extract certain um, antioxidants and certain uh, the chemicals of the plants that can be helpful for, for your general health, but the actual minerals are easier extracted out of teas or with vinegar. So I find that the teas are a great way if you're looking for like nettles, for example, to take out the most um, iron and calcium and magnesium out of there is teas or into the, um, yeah, into the apple cider vinegar. Um, yeah, we'll have to um, get you guys all this PDF. <laughs> so when you, when you, these are all your perennials, but what about my annuals? What about my dill and my basil, or different types of basil? Or? So same idea. Same, same idea. I just had a limited amount that I yeah, could yeah. talk about in one session, but uh, I mean, annuals, same idea. Like a lot of them are culinary or medicinal. Um, and I do same idea, so I dry mine. Um, I use a lot of a lot of the annuals. I actually tend to find that I like fresh more fresh than dry. Okay. Yeah. Like for example, basil. I don't know. I prefer basil. Doesn't fresh. dry very well. I I prefer it fresh. So it's yeah. something I usually use more seasonally, mm -hmm. rather than the perennials. I find that I use them a little bit more throughout the whole year. Um, but same idea. You could dry them. You can do the same ideas with. Yeah, into the vinegars. Um, and I mean these vinegars as well, like the vinegar and honey mixes, yeah. they work really well as salad dressings. Mm -hmm. okay. So same idea, if you wanted to do one with dill or basil, yeah. you could do that and it would still have medicinal properties, but it also tastes you really good. Do you plant them in poor soil also? Um, they, they still probably don't want too much fertilizer. Okay. Yeah, okay. They're, they're generally actually happier in a slightly poorer soil than okay. richer soil, um, but I find that annuals are a little bit more forgiving maybe for that yeah okay. but um will it keep growing if i keep say cutting basil a same bit idea we like to trim ours back uh, okay. we trim them like like for our farm we yeah. trim every week oh okay. so we're harvesting every week i know you, you sell so, bags and things yeah out. so we're just trimming every yeah. week from the basil i mean we have a larger amount so maybe some is not pruned every week yeah. but in general they like to be pruned back and one thing I found with plants is they actually like to be picked by hand better than with scissors. Oh, okay. It's uh, I can't remember what it is, but it is something probably with nature, with animals eating rather than mm. humans using metal. They mm -hmm. they actually respond better to Just being picking? pruned off like that if you can. Some of them like rosemary are a little hard to a little hard to pick. <laughs> a little hard to pick, but they they do like to be hand picked if possible. Um. But yeah, like the, I yeah, I would say like the annuals are in some ways easier. In some ways, I mean, it's nice to have perennials because then you, if you can keep them, then you don't have yeah. to worry about replanting them. But uh, I had a little list of other perennials after this as well. Um, I have just herbal body oiling. Um, yeah, so I do like the herbal body oils that you can use for on your skin or on your scalp sometimes some of them like rosemary i will do like a little bit on my scalp before having a shower so drop some oil on the scalp and massage it in um it's really great for helping helping reduce like dandruff or just general scalp health um with the oils i usually let the herbs wilt for about 12 to 24 hours depending on how much moisture is in them and then Putting them in the jar with the oil that just like helps reduce the chances of mold forming. Um, some people say let them dry completely, but I find that actually the, the oils turn out better if they're not completely completely dry. So wilting, they're not dry. They're, just... they're not completely dry. So after 12 to 24 hours, they will be wilted. Yeah, same they'll, thing. They'll, on, on they'll your look mash. a little sad. <laughs> yeah, put it on your yeah. mash yeah. and let them yeah. get a little wilted. It'll just reduce the moisture content in them without completely reducing all of the, yeah, okay. all of the. If I had mold on the top of my jar, I would throw the whole thing out. Um, I would recommend yes. yes. Um, I mean, for my own, if my own personal use, yes. I've done it where I've scooped off the top and used it for myself, but I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't use it for someone else. Like I wouldn't recommend using it really that way because. Well, you'd have a better idea yeah. if it was bad than yeah. I Yeah, yeah. So I would recommend it. Yeah, but yeah. I find that with wilting it, they usually don't mold. And in that case, like, I'll use the wilted herbs and then fill it with oil. Okay. And put it somewhere dark and not too warm. And then yeah. I usually put a little plate under it because sometimes it actually, like, the oil will seep out of it depending on okay. how full you put it. 
Um, and I recommend just shaking it up every couple days. Just give them a shake. Um, and I usually leave them for about a month. And let them just sit like that. And yeah, so the body oils, I, can, I use body oils like every day actually for myself after a shower. And I have a little list here, like common, common things that people say when they're doing body oil and logs that it helps with relax, like relaxing your muscles, um, improving sleep, improving immunity, and obviously like softer skin and healthier skin. Um, yeah, and depending on the herbs, like I, I use, make some with like Arnica, for example, so that can help with bruising or muscle pain. So again, it depends on the herb, obviously, the benefits that you get out of it. Um, yeah, and then oxymals. Oxymals are the half honey and half apple cider vinegar. So those ones are definitely, like I recommend those a lot for immunity. So I do, for example, fire cider, which I might have here somewhere. So fire cider, oh yeah, here. So fire cider uses things like ginger and garlic. And so it's a little bit more than maybe what I'm talking about here, but ginger, garlic, onions, herbs, and spices. And then you do the same thing in apple cider vinegar and honey. And I, I like to take that one through the winter because it really helps boost the immune system. Um, and apple cider vinegar and honey are both great for the immune system as they are. Um, Tinctures, so tinctures are, like I said, with alcohol. Um, so the tincture, I usually I usually use fresh herbs, so that's when I also don't use the dry herbs. So you could do the same thing, like you said, with the annuals. You can make okay. tinctures with those as well. Wilting them though. No, you don't have to wilt don't them. Wilting. No, because the alcohol is very highly preserving. Oh, okay, preserving, so it's yeah. just the oil. That it's just the oil that I would, that I would wilt. wilt. Same with the apple cider vinegar. You don't need to wilt them. Okay. You can use fresh herbs. How do you take the tincture, like just a drop? Like so again, I can't go over it with every single herb, but for right. most herbs, um, so they come in, for example, this one here. So this is like a sleep, sleep tincture that I have. So this one has catnip and oats, skull cap and lemon balm. Um, so this one, like I would take half a dropper full to a dropper full before bed. So but the thing with herbs is I find, like maybe other medications too, is you have to take it consistently a little bit. You can't take it once and hope that it works 100%. Um, but so it depends on the herb itself, but usually it's anywhere between like five to 10 drops to a dropper full, um, one to three times a day, but it depends again on the herbs and what you're using it for. Certain herbs, for example, could be like a digestive herb um, like lemon balm, you could, if you feel like you are a person that has to indigestion sometimes, you could take a lemon balm, like a half to a full dropper of lemon balm after a meal or before a meal to help just with digestion and help your What about stomach. acid reflux or tincture? Hmm. For acid reflux, I find that like a, a milky oats might be really good for that. It's, it's super calming for the nervous system, but it also has a lot that helps with like um, mu the mucous membranes, so that could help with that. Um, lemon balm also is actually good for like slippery elm. Slippery elm would work. Yeah, yeah. that's not one that I grow, I know, but, it, but it but it could help it with that for sure. What's milky oats? Like? So milky oats. Um, let me make sure I'm good here on time. Milky oats are actually the unripe um, tops of oats. Oh. So they're act when the oats grow um, before they become the hard kernel of oats, they'll be like a green seed. And when you squeeze them, they actually have like kind of a milky, a milky texture to them. Um, and the milky oats I often tincture or make into the oxymel, and they're super good for the nervous system. So they help actually repair nervous system damage. Um, they've been recommended by a lot of herbalists for even strokes and just general repair of nervous system. Um, but again, they also can help with the mucous membranes in the body um, and super nutrient rich as well. Um, so that's, I, I like the milky oats a lot for a lot of things. Um, yeah. so we've kind of talked about this the <coughs> harvesting. Um, yeah, again, if you're going to dry herbs, it's best to harvest them when it's dry and sunny. So as much as possible, try to harvest them when they're already dry, so they're not, um, you know, don't harvest them in the rain, and then try to dry them because they might be extra, extra moisture in there. Um, 
yeah, air drying usually uh, for storage. I usually keep them in glass jars if I can. Um, for some bulk herbs that I've had, because I've had a hard time finding big gallon jars, I've kept them in the big ice cream, like food, food grade ice cream buckets. But in general, I say dry and then into the, into the jars. Um, and for dried herbs, I usually recommend using them up within the first year or two because they are their most potent when you when you use them really fresh. Um, yeah. And then if, if anyone has any questions, let me know. I'm kind of going through my notes here. <laughs> um, I just had notes about buying seeds versus buying plants. Um, for some of the perennials, it's probably easier to buy plants themselves because then they're already started because they tend to be a little bit slow to start from seeds. Um, so for that, for plants, local farmers markets or local places like this usually have um, plants that are started. Other places where Richter's is a really great um, place to get some more rare herbs from because they'll have little started plants that you can buy or seeds as well. Um, yeah, so seed swaps. I kind of had written this for last week before the seed swap, and now we're oh. after, so the seed swaps already happened. But seed swaps, um, salt spring seeds is really good, Richter seeds is really good. Um, yeah, and then I had just other herbs that are fairly easy to grow that are a little bit more, um, a little bit more of the annuals were like parsley or dill, cilantro, basil, chives. They're all really great as culinary herbs and they have their own medicinal properties. Um, I have yarrow. Yarrow is a wild one, but you can also grow in your garden. Um, catnip. Catnip is a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> the cats like it, but it's also a really great um, nervous system herb. It helps with sleep and it um, also helps calm the digestive system. And I like that one a lot in tea, actually. Is Different than it is different, yeah. It's it is in the same uh, family as mint, but it's not it's not catnip. Okay. It won't drive your cats crazy. Oh. Um, the catnip itself is Cataria. I'm trying to remember the Latin name, I think something like that. Um, so it is not as closely related to mint as that cat. cat mint. Yeah, yeah. But they yeah. like it. They like it too, but it's it is. On it. Right? But the cat catnip itself is the one that cats go really crazy oh, okay. over. Crazy over. <laughs> um, some other things. What do you use yarrow for? Like, uh, yarrow. So a couple of the ways that I like to use yarrow, I make tincture. So same idea with the alcohol, with fresh yarrow, and it's super great as at stopping um, bleeding. So again, I wouldn't recommend it in a first aid situation. <laughs> but um, for example, I've found that I sometimes get nosebleeds from heat and from dry weather. And I put the tincture onto a paper towel and put it on and it will stop bleeding. Um, so that's one way. Or also for bleeding gums. If you tend to have um, bleeding gums, I, get, I use it sometimes as a, a gargle. So you can put the tincture with some water and gargle with that. Um, Yarrow is also uh, antiviral and antibacterial, so it will help with um, like cold and flu symptoms. Um, it's, it's one that I wouldn't recommend taking all the time, but it's something you could use when you're feeling under the weather. And it is great for stopping nosebleeds. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mostly, most of my notes there, I think. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Or? Just, I've seen people build what they call it, like an herb spiral with bricks and mm. is that really something that's worthwhile trying to build? Like building like a container that's in yeah. a spiral? I mean it could be. Oh, okay. It could be. Um, most of the herbs grow really fine in containers. Sure, yeah. So I think like a spiral like that is more of an aesthetic thing like more than anything else, but it could if you wanted to try it, I'm sure it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah like a lot of like my Personal herb garden, I've got them all in raised beds. Yeah. So I've I had them all in the ground in yeah. like a garden garden yeah. and it got too crazy with farming and with vegetables to keep up on the weeding and to keep it maintained. So I've actually built um, all of mine into raised beds. Mm -hmm. 
so they're in the ground and they're permanent, the perennials, but they're, at, they're off the ground in their, in their latest beds. And I find that's working pretty good so far. So I could see a spiral work. Yeah. yeah. And it'd be aesthetically pleasing, right? It, yeah. would look, it would look nice. And I find most of them grow fine together. Like they don't, yeah. they're not, I mean, mint, maybe mint does like to compete with everything else, but yeah. a lot of the others will grow fairly well together. Questions? I don't know. Yeah, I had a so I had some tea here. If anybody wants some tea, um, and I brought a few books that I just her books that I like. If anybody wants to have a look at these, um, yeah, I think that's mostly what I had. And you sell at Green Cross Garden? Yeah. So I do the herb, like I grow all the herbs there. Um, and then I sell at the markets uh, with Green Crop Garden. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm there every well, twice, or once every second week right now for the winter, and then every week in yeah, the summer. Yeah, she go to the end of the market. Oh yeah, my mom's usually there. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but she does bring some stuff sometimes, sort of depending on what, what I have. I'm I'm uh, like I have limited amounts of what I have, so it sort of depends on the season which products I do have. Yeah, so I usually go there, Enderby. My mom does Kelowna, so we bring some stuff there as well. And then at the farm store yeah. itself. Yeah. And where's your farm store? We're in, in Green Road. Road. Okay. Yeah. And when is it open? It's Thursdays and Fridays, so noon till 6 p.m. And, um, yeah. It's great because then you can go for a walk in the garden. Yeah. I, I mean, right now it. it's winter, so it's, it's not the same right now. But you, can, you can go and. Talk to the sheep over there. You can talk yeah. to the sheep. The dog will meet you. But like, so like I said, I think in the spring when I yeah. have the garden back, like it's all yeah. in the snow right now, but when I have this, the garden back up and going in April, May, I might do like some herb gardening tours. That'd be great. Just have awesome. come out and have, because it is hard just speaking about it. Yeah. It is a little bit, I felt very nervous. I'm like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what people want to know or what. People know or don't know, but I think if you go into the garden itself, and maybe maybe I can focus on a few different plants or mm -hmm. do, else do a little tea workshop or something, yeah. right? Like that. Tea, work. mm -hmm. tea workshop would be cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Does anyone want any tea? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have some herb books to look at. No. Thanks, guys, for being patient with me. This is my. You did very well. Public speaking. I have. I like for like the oil itself or for the herbs. I like all of them. Yeah, very dry and I like olive oil. Um, calendula, like so if you infuse calendula into oil, I find it very good for Okay. 